Hello lovelies, I'm Angela and this, say it with me now, this is Parisian Farm Girl. This is where we celebrate joie de vivre and all things beautiful, always striving to celebrate life and make our surroundings as beautiful as possible. One of the ways I do this is by growing snapdragons and today I'm going to share with you everything I know about snapdragons. Chances are you know more. Please leave a comment if there's some little tip or pointer that you want to share with us about this favorite flower. Now these were my great grandmother's favorite flowers. She was a gardener extraordinaire. Now it's my understanding that she was more pragmatic than I am in my gardening. She had children to feed. She was a farmer's wife and she used her garden to do that. But she did grow snapdragons, so I was raised on snapdragons. In fact, as a child, I was given a bouquet of snapdragons from my mom every September, and I walked to school like a good little girl, and I gave them to the teacher to start off the school year on the right note. So everything I tell you today maybe will help you start off your gardening season on the right note by learning how to grow this beautiful, long-lasting, vigilant, tough flower, just like you and I. This flower has grit. The Latin name for this flower, now this is not my forte, but the Latin name for this flower is Antirrhinum magus. So we have anti from the Greek, which means to resemble, and we have rhine. Of course, that means snout or nose. And when you look closely to every child's delight, this flower resembles the snout of a dragon and functions as such. These amazing flowers are hardy in zones seven through 10, but here, even in zone 5B, I've got some tricks to share with you on how you can successfully overwinter yours. So I'm gonna set these down, disappear just for a second. Let's talk about this amazing flower. Chances are you have seen snapdragons at your local hardware store in reds, in yellows, in very quintessential snap colors. Most likely, those were dwarf snapdragons. I have to confess, I can pass on the dwarf snapdragon. It does have its place in window boxes and planters, but what I really like to grow are the power players, those rocket snapdragons that can grow up to three, three and a half feet tall. When you buy your seed, you will need to choose between groups one and two and groups three and four. Groups one and two are those ruffled snapdragons that you see. Uh, it's a little bit harder for the pollinators to get in there and do their thing. So if speaking to the pollinators in your garden is your thing, keep that in mind. Groups three and four are your rocket snapdragons. They're gonna last a little bit longer in the vase. Of course, there are tips on this channel on how to make your flowers last really long when you cut them and bring them inside. Now, what I suggest is that you grow your snaps from seed because as you've probably experienced, going to the nursery and buying a flat of annuals can be very, very expensive. And most of us find that we want five, six, seven, eight plus flats of annuals. So a cost-effective way to enjoy snapdragons and many other annuals is to buy seeds. I get mine from Johnny's. What you're looking at behind me is the back garden. I've shared very little of this because it's a garden in the making, but let's be real, what garden isn't a garden in the making? But we started this with this sort of project wraparound idea, which I think I shared with you a few weeks in this Potager series. But it's really exciting because this was just a giant weed patch and the boys last fall built me the beds that you see. They stretch this way and that way. There's about five of them so far. And I shared the greenhouse with you earlier this year where we have basil and tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers. This space is where I wanted to really focus on having a cutting garden. Sure, I can cut flowers from the front gardens, but I always feel that loss. I feel sort of bad, like I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul, robbing Peter to bring my flowers inside to the table. So this is a great space because I can just grow annuals en masse and I can see them out the kitchen and the living room window, which is right behind you, which is fantastic. Hopefully I've convinced you to buy seed 
this fall. Set it aside, put it in the cooler, keep it safe, keep it away from the mice if you're storing it in your greenhouse. And I have persuaded you to grow snapdragons from seed next year. It's very easy. Whatever planting medium you're using, you can sprinkle the seeds on top or use something like a wet toothpick or a wet tongue depressor and grab a few and set them right on top. You're not going to sink them down into the medium because this is a very, very small seed. And I think that small seeds like basil and digitalis, foxglove, snapdragon, I think sometimes that's intimidating for the newer gardener. They see those small seeds and they think they're going to just literally get lost in the mix. Most likely, you're just putting those small seeds right on top. So that's what you'll do with your snapdragon seeds. They need light to germinate. So I do get the soil, whatever medium it is, a little bit moist. Then I put the seeds right on top and put them in the sunshine. So in a sunny windowsill, once they have germinated, then you definitely want to put them under lights so they don't get leggy as they're growing. And you're doing this about eight to 10 weeks before that final frost date. Again, I'm choosing snaps, sometimes from group one and two, because those are the Chantilly, Madame Butterfly. They're very ruffly, they're fantastic. I'm choosing them from that group, and I'm also choosing them from group three and four. Those are your rockets, and they're gonna go long and strong. The rocket snapdragons, those quintessential basic snapdragons, they are very hardy, and they're gonna bloom all summer long. Let me say that again. They're going to bloom all summer long. They love the heat. And something that is very useful, especially if you're a new gardener, sometimes it's hard to gauge, like how much do I want to water? How much do I want my plants to learn to stand on their own a little bit? The snapdragon is very hardy. When the snapdragon starts to wilt, that is your big red flag. Girlfriend, it's time to water the garden. So I sort of keep an eye on them if I've had a busy week. If the snapdragons start to look sad, that's my cue. Stop procrastinating, get out there, water the garden. And I want you guys to tune in next week, give or take, because that hose that I featured a few weeks ago, I had so many questions on that. I'm actually gonna do a giveaway for one of those fantastic retractable hoses. I bet you can sort of see it snaking around in the background there, because I use it all the time to water my greenhouse. So once you harden off those seedlings in the spring, what I do is I pinch every other one back. It's really painful to do. It makes me feel terrible, but I know in doing so, I'm going to create a nice bushy plant that has lots of blooms instead of one just coming straight up. Now, if you don't wanna do that, you can let them grow. And then when they have blooms, just like what you see in the background here, you can cut them just a few inches below the soil, or not below the soil, a few inches above the soil and then they'll start to bush out from there. So let's talk a little bit about cutting them because bringing snapdragons indoors is so fabulously enjoyable. They're a wonderful gift. They are a cutting flower that lasts forever on the table, but there's a few things to keep in mind. If I'm cutting them for myself, I'm just going to cut when about a third of the blooms on the plumage, let's call it, have started to bloom. If I'm cutting them for someone's special occasion or I'm going to be traveling with them, you've seen me on Instagram, you know that I travel with a vase of flowers in my console in the middle of my truck, then I will cut the flower even sooner. Maybe when there's less than a third, maybe when there's like a quarter of the amount of blooms because they will open up as the week continues. When you cut your snapdragons in the garden, just strip the leaves down. Remember, we never want any foliage below the water line in our vase. Pop them in some nice cold water. Again, check out previous videos on the channel because I've got great tips about keeping your flowers lovely and long lasting indoors. Something to remember, depending on where you place the vase of your snapdragons in the house is that they are photocentric. So think about like a sunflower, they're going to follow the sun. So if you put them in a really sunny area, they're all gonna sort of crane around and you might not have the arrangement look that you want. So either put them somewhere a little bit more sheltered or be sure to give them a turn as you pass through the room during the day.
after this quick sponsor break, I'm going to take these beautiful things inside, do an arrangement for you. Stick around because I'm going to share with you something you might not know about Snapdragons and I'm going to give a list of many different varieties that I think you might like to try next summer. Shaker and Spoon is a monthly cocktail subscription box that delivers craft cocktail experiences to your front door. Each monthly box arrives with three original recipes created by world-class bartenders, as well as enough ingredients, syrups, bitters, aromatics, garnishes, and more for 12 cocktails, four from each recipe. What I'm going to make is called a feather billet. I have my recipe card right here. It's got rose syrup and lime juice and chocolate mole bitters and grapefruit soda, which makes me very, very happy. So I'm going to get this mixed up and uh, celebrate our beautiful, gorgeous snapdragons. Of course, we live on a farm. I'm not cool enough to have a martini shaker, so I'm using a ball jar, which means you can too. So I love this idea of complex drinks being made easy, and they even have tutorials to learn new techniques while you're learning to make your fab cocktails. If you'd like to level up and try something like this, visit shakerandspoon.com forward slash Paris for $20 off your first box. Okay, let's give it a try. I'm really excited about the mole and grapefruit. Seriously, they had me at mole and grapefruit. Oh, that's super fun. So click the link below in this video description for $20 off your first box or simply visit shakerandspoon.com forward slash Paris and enjoy $20 off some fabulous treats delivered to your home as well. Cheers. These powerhouses can grow to over 36 inches and are hardy, like I said, in zone seven through 10, but even here in zone 5B, I have employed a little trick that is working out pretty good. It's not foolproof, but snapdragons can be overwintered if you cut them down to about 10 inches. This lets the cold work its way down and not get all the way to the roots and do all that destruction. So don't cut them really, really short. Just cut them down to about 10 inches in the fall and leave them over winter. Mulch them really good. And chances are, if you are in a colder climate like I am, Come spring, late spring, you're going to start to see little green leaves grow at the bottom and that snapdragon will come back with a roar. Thank you so much for joining me today. For this 
content in writing, if you're the kind of person that likes to watch it and then read it to retain a little bit more, be sure to visit ParisianFarmGirl.com. I'd love you to stick around on the channel, watch this video up here, and if you are an old soul and love the old ways of doing things from flower arranging to interior design, make sure that you are a member of my Old World Design Society. You can click, where is it? This circle right here. And I will see you again very soon. A bientôt.